This conference will now be recorded. And so it shall be. Hi, my name is Amy Falcon. I'm in California here with Christopher Power in uh, Bang Surrey, Thailand. And uh, another, another round of our conversations around the world. And we started talking the other day about the maps of the new paradigm. And along those lines, Christopher, I want to spring this on you. Another one that you wrote a while back that really stuck with me. This incredibly brilliant piece on a new way to look at the Pareto principle. The idea of the 80-20 rule. And what really drove home on me and what I want to talk to you about and ask you about is this concept of you keep talking about bringing our best to the table in the idea of the new the paradigm the new paradigm we show up as we truly are and in that each of us is bringing and in using our unique gifts in a way we've never been able to use before and you you created a whole new way of looking at the Pareto principle. You took it from math to a human experience. Just just describe and to me what, what I said that stuck with you. You talked right? about the I yes, it's the idea that the people when when we look at ourselves in humanity as each of us has a gift and a blessing to bring then and everybody then has a vital role to play in contributing to life into how we handle survival and make sure it's handled for everyone there are people who are going to be naturally more gifted in one area than the other and despite what consensus reality tells us you have to be all of one thing even if you're not what you presented was that in the new paradigm, we have people who are valued for being loving. We have people who are valued for being able to create art. We have people who are, you know, they're valued for their ability to care for others and people who are valued for their ability to create money. Um, bring in resources and the idea being that when everybody's doing everybody focuses on their role so that other people can focus on their role and no one is diminished is this ringing any bells yep yeah, yep yeah. so yeah. so can you how how does this so let's tie this into the new paradigm and the maps because it strikes me as really important yeah. Um, when when I say you know we turn up in the new paradigm as who we truly are, when you said that, the first thought that went through my open mind was warts and all, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, because yeah. um, one of the biggest faults in the whole alternative scene is the thing that I call greed for perf for perfection. Right? Now, it doesn't mean you can't attempt to do the very best. That's not what I'm talking about. It's like nothing's ever good enough. And there's always more, there's always more, but it gets to the point where I'm not good enough and therefore I can put off doing what I'm naturally gifted at doing or bringing my unique energy to the table. Now, the first thing in turning up as who you really are is to turn up physically. And then, you know, you take time to look at your, your design, which really cuts through a lot of crap, but also you look at the way you use your mind, you know, whether it's your head's full of positive thoughts or negative thoughts or, you know, expansive or contracting. Your body's full of expanding or contracting emotions. Um, what were you taught to do that didn't suit you? What were you taught to do that actually actively works against you, truly owning 
the beauty of who you are. So in the last 50 years, there's been a ton of work done in the alternative scene and for a couple of hundred years before that in psychology and other areas on sorting out those problems. You know, you don't put a hamburger into your laptop because it doesn't fit. But, you know, if you put a hard drive in or something like that, it works. So it's showing up as who you really are and then making sure you're in an environment that truly suits you and that you're able to take in information the way that you take it in most effectively in an environment that suits you, where you can see the world the way that only you can see it. And then draw upon the thing that drives you or motivates you to show up as your best self. Because if you're motivated to show up as your best self, but it's not what truly motivates you, it's going to be some sort of distortion. Now, in human design, those four things are called your outer authority. But before that, you need to understand how to make decisions that work for you. Because that will, that's the thing. If you, doesn't matter whether you're showing up as who you really are, but you're making terrible decisions for you, <laughs> it's, it's still going to be a mess, right? So there's that. And then there's all sorts of other things that tie into that. Do people appreciate you or put you down? You know, is there a society around you that, welcomes the best of you or that is scared of the best of you. So these are huge problems we've had in the past and still do have, you know, because there's a thing called cancel culture that just cancels anybody that doesn't fit your particular biases, prejudices or point of view. So people don't feel welcome. They don't feel appreciated for being themselves. And they rebel against that and create all sorts of distortions that justify putting all of those, you know, boundaries on them in the first place. So there's a lot to sort out there. But once you, you've got to a point where there's at least enough opportunity available to deal with that, which we are at in the world at the moment, with the internet, yeah. with 50 years of alternative approaches and hundreds of years of psychology and science and various other things, you know, when you take the best of that, uh, it's freely available. I saw a little boy who must have been three or less sitting on the back of a bike in Bunxeray on my way home today. And his father's sitting on the bike and they're just waiting there. And this little three-year-old is totally absorbed in the cell phone. Totally. The cell phone's almost as big as he is. No, I mean, I'm <laughs> exaggerating. It looked like a huge cell phone because he was so small. But here's a three-year-old just completely into it. Four-year-old, maybe. You know, mm -hmm. he's already savvy on cellular technology. Yeah right? It's just mind-blowing. Right. So all of that is available. But what we need to do is come back to the foundational principles that allow us to show up as who we really are. And the Pareto principle basically, well, there's a lot more to it, but, you know, it says 20%. 80% of the results come from 20% of the action. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you bring your best 20% to the table, you're going to get massive results, right? Yeah. As long as the other 80% isn't distracting you, right? right. Or at least is, is supporting you. Yep. Okay. I found, so there's I that. found the piece. I found the piece that you wrote. <laughs> And there was oh, yeah. one, I'll read this back to you, just this one bit. 
For the remaining 80%, they would have the opportunity to identify their most effective and efficient 20% of life, whether it be in production, protection, creativity, agriculture, or building industry. This would allow them to focus on their strengths and enjoy life to the fullest. Okay, so. Yeah, you got that. You can't do that unless certain things happen. And this is the work I'm going to really focus on. And it's mm -hmm. what the Arthurian legend as a map of what we're dealing with at the moment brings up as the fundamental things, right? One, you've got to be able to recognise the right opportunities for you in the midst of chaos. If you can't figure out what the right opportunities are for you in the midst of chaos, chaos is going to be terrifying because you, you, you won't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. You need to let love or the longing to be loved give birth to your magic or the power of your imagination to really bring richness into your life. You need to learn your unique power of imagination or magic. You know, that 20, that 20 percent of the 20 percent, the thing that's just, how did you do that? Wow. Right? The wow factor, the magic that each one of us has. Right? You know, that little autistic girl up in um, Lom Suk, Mai. Mai, You know, yes. she, she's autistic and even looks it. But there's something about her that's just so, it, it's breathtaking when you're in her presence, if you're aware of it, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the light she radiates. Right? Everybody loves her and they don't even know why. I've seen it and it's like, wow. Right? So yeah. that magic in you. And then you've got to use your magic in the real world of chaos and, you know, all of stuff that's going on currently it's not like you can just click your hands and it all becomes wonderful it's like no there's still a lot of stuff we have to sort out in the world on you know right from terrifying war and destruction all the way through to just getting along with your best friend or you, yeah. your partner in a relationship so you have to learn to use it in the real world and then you need to learn to find the tools that best serve you that really do you know whether it's information or computers or phones or any number of plows or whatever technology really suits you and then you need to gather around you real friends and allies true friends people who do support you and you need to discover that friendship and deepen that friendship in the experiences of everyday life. You know, it has to be tested by the challenges and the battles of life. And then you need to find someone who's a true partner in relationship. You could even say a life partner because relationships now have just been reduced to casual affairs or temporary experiences and that's not what they're fully that's not where their full potential arises let's just put it that way i mean if people choose to do that okay but you're never going to really test yourself and the other person to the core of your being until you're in a relationship where there's a lifelong commitment of some form you know, a real friendship, respect, love, where you use your differences as assets rather than liabilities. And that takes both parties. And that's, that's a real challenge, particularly when survival isn't the bottom line. Yeah. And then you need to weave those relationships together into teams. Women need to own their power not compete against men. Men aren't the enemy. It's like 
They need to own the power that they have. Men need to own their strength. Women need to empower men to use that strength in the best possible way, the way they truly want to in their heart. And then men will give their life to support the woman in her creativity, using her power creatively. And then you need to form teams of people that work, you know, like a business or the round table, Arthur and the Knights ruling the kingdom, but the role of the women in supporting that and then the women working on their own to create the power to enable the kingdom to flourish the energy, you know, like tapping into renewable or real energy, sustainable energy. Yeah. And then weave that and then the community, each person in that community needs to have the opportunity to win. And the only way they lose is if they make a deliberate concerned effort to lose. <laughs> right? In other words, right. everything's there supporting them, bringing them, they've got people to look up to. You know, in the Arthurian legend would be the knights or the king or whatever, but their parents, like in Thailand, the elders are treated with such respect. You know, the children learn very, I see it walking through the market, the young child taking the grandmother by the hand and walking her through the market. It's just built in. Mm -hmm. You know, they just do that. So there's this support and there's this love and, and love becomes real. And then facing the challenges, how do you make it sustainable? How do you deal with the fact that people have different points of view? How do you turn those differences into assets? Um, and then how do you make it sustainable and long term so that it passes from generation to generation without degenerating, which is what often happens, okay? Right. And how does each person own their true magic for themselves so that they live, they live this life with that gift as part of who they are? All of that is fundamental stuff. And I know I've got that from you. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be delicate um, here. But you're leading into, yeah. you know, what we should be talking about next. And this is reminding me of the, that there's so much depth in the phrase the advanced work in anything is the basics done really well so how about we get into that next time and very very as good we start on the our journey on the following the map of the new paradigm well can i just say really quickly if somebody's enjoyed this go back and listen <laughs> go back and, and listen to those steps and let it lay a foundation in your subconscious because these are fund you know character and uh, the, pro the effective use of power the true use of power yeah. all of these are fundamentals to creating a new world that truly works and where people do not suffer you know survival is handled they don't suffer and they truly realize their full potential. So thanks, Amy, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, thank you, Christopher. I think we're all ready at this point, maybe beyond ready. And um, bringing the maps in is, uh, this is timely and it's needed and I appreciate your time very much. So um, everyone, this is gonna be on Christopher's YouTube channel. Uh, like and subscribe. There's amazing content there and uh, more to come. And uh, just thank you again, Christopher, for the time and the conversation and the wisdom. To be My continued. pleasure. All right.